Hi, Amy. It's Rolf Johnson, Al Johnson, Swedish restaurant in Sister Bay. Our another requested recipe is Swedish pancakes. Unfortunately, I cannot give you our recipe. I will lose my job. I will give you the next best thing. It's the closest one that I know of that uh, doesn't duplicate it exactly. But if I was to come to your house and you said you're in charge of breakfast, this is the one I'd make for you. We call it 3-2-1 in Sweden because it's going to be three eggs, two cups of milk, one cup of flour. And it's as simple as that. The other ingredients are optional. So we'll start out with three eggs. two cups of milk, one cup of flour. Now, the Swedish pancakes is much thicker, or I'm sorry, much thinner, thinner than the uh, traditional American pancakes or whatever else you see out there. There's no rising agent in it. It's more like a, uh, a crepe. And we make them a little different here than you'll see any place else. Now, these are the optional ingredients. If you want to put some sugar in it, which we do, and you can put a little butter in it, which I don't always do at the restaurant. So that was a hint for you right there. And that's about it. Now, for this product to work out well for you, you got to let it sit for a day, uh, preferably in the cooler. And tomorrow morning it would be perfect. I happen to have some batter here that is perfect. All right, now here's our finished product. We go through about uh, 18 of these buckets on a busy day in the summertime. Obviously, it's not a busy day today. We'll have two guys manning four grills. The wait staff will call the orders in. They'll shout them out. We'll add and subtract in our head. Each scoop is about eight ounces. Each scoop is about one order of pancakes. We'll take these and we'll spread them out. And here's the uniqueness about these pancakes. We don't make them round. The reason we don't is we got so darn busy one time, my grandmother said, give me the spatula. This is how we're going to make them. And she spread them out just like so. And then we thought, well, how's she going to flip them? And I'll show you in a second. Typically, there'd be two guys here. I'd go to the next griddle. I'd put on another rack, as we like to call them. And when I'm done doing this rack, this rack would be better to cut and flip. All right. Now we're going to cut them. And flip them. And that's it. Takes a while to get them thin, or the master the thinness of them. Al, he used to make them so thin they only had one side. How he did that, I have no idea. But that's what he used to say. Typically now, I'd come and cut this rack, flip that rack, and this rack would be ready to go by the time I'm done doing that. We'd have a line of wait staff waiting here to pick up pancakes. And each order is four to an order. Here's our finished product, Al Johnson Swedish Pancakes. Now the true Swede, or the wannabe Swede for breakfast, you'd eat these with Swedish lingonberries. Lingonberries are grown all over Scandinavia. They're grown in the wild. They're not commercially produced. We get all these imported from Scandinavia, usually Sweden, sometimes Finland, sometimes Norway. Uh, now this is the way I eat my pancakes. This is the way I think everybody should eat their pancakes. Come in and Al's and try them out. We serve more lingonberries in North America than anybody with the exception of Ikea.